Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Behind the Voices with Derek Stephen Prince. And now, today's guest, Erica Schroeder. introduction ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm even though amazing. I totally screwed that up like Tarzan. That was amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So, how are you, my dear? I am well. How, how are how are how are things? How's the how's the heat up there in in New York? And where are you at? It's, it's not too bad. I'm I'm just in the outskirts. I'm in Jersey, but um Oh, what part of Jersey? Uh, Northern Jersey. Okay. But yeah, I I lived like uh, in New York for sixteen years. Oh wow. And then, yeah, and then I lived. Uh, I moved a little bit further out, and then now we just finally moved a little bit closer again. Mm. Because at one point, you know, when the kids were um, younger, I had limited my recording days to two or three days a week. Right. And then now I'm back up to. Up to five, you know, however, however many days I'm needed. Yeah. So I was like, I need to move closer again. Mm. Um, Start working with my with a new agent and stuff. So I was like, I gotta get, you know, closer to the game. Yeah. Now remind me. So, um, and I, I know this isn't necessarily public information, so it's okay if you if you can't sure. answer this. But um, you do you have three boys or two boys? I have two. I was about to say two girls. I have one boy. <laughs> One girl. Okay. But apparently, I don't even know what I have. But <laughs> hey, they're around <laughs> somewhere. It's like do your thing. I have two kids. <laughs> yeah, I have um, I have uh, a ten-year-old boy and a twelve-year-old girl. Okay. And she's a and she's uh, already voice acting. Oh, is she really? Yeah, yeah. It's just started. It's kind of slow, and then all of a sudden. Next thing we knew, she was in an Oscar-nominated film. And what? I was like, okay, maybe we need to get her an agent, you know? And then it was so weird because I had switched agents and um, like two months before. And then my first agent I ever had moved to my new agency. Oh, and then wow. she got nominated wow. the, uh, for not she, but the yeah, show got Right, right, right. Awesome. And I went, okay, so maybe this is like the universe telling me I need to call her and be like, Hey, <laughs> you want to represent, you know, right. so it worked out. It was like perfect. That's Adult awesome. Pro- yeah. So are you both with the same agent? We have this, we don't have the same agent. She's but with the, the same agency. Pro- I'm with, so she gets to a, a audition for all the kid parts. Yes. And I get to be like all the women. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, I am, I can play dragons and zombies and, right. and bears and, yes. you know, uh, but they kind of stick with mostly for me right now, uh, women. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just women. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, has, has she gotten in on the whole Pokemon thing yet or no? She has not. Not. And I think the main reason is because they don't use kids. I think when, when Tom was a director, his kids were in it. If they had like little tiny preschoolers Yeah. or there was some, but, um, there haven't been any children on the show, I think, in at least like, gosh, it must be six or seven years. So um, sometimes they'll consider a child for like a preschool uh, age, just because all the other kids are like 11, 13 yeah, kind of age. Yeah, right. So they kind of just want to stick with uh, adults for it. Okay. But she, it's, she has asked me. Yeah, I'm sure. She has asked Mom, what about Pokemon? And I'm yeah. like, that's me, honey. <laughs> I wish I could pull those strings, but does she no. does she have her own demo at this point? She doesn't have her own demo. She's okay. um, she started out. Um, what did she do first? Her first project was Zarafa um, with uh, G Kids and NYAV, mm. and then she did a, a podcast. Um, had a guest, a couple guest roles on this really cute podcast. And I'm forgetting the name of on Pinna. Okay, she played this cute little girl named Kate, and then she. Um, Booked a couple more things with with uh, NYAV, and she got um, uh, Marai, and that was the one that was uh, nominated for the Golden. Oh right, okay. Oscar, and then 
she, and then G Kids. G Kids really, they really like her. Um, they've been so good to her. They just, I, I guess they like her. So they gave her Oko. Um, she auditioned for the lead character of Oko and Oko's Anshu. She got that. And then wow. shortly after that, she got Chuggington. She plays Coco, which is really weird because <laughs> O-K-O and K-O-K-O. She's like, Mom, the only lead roles I play have the same four letters in them. K-O-K-O. And I'm like, that is weird. Right? <laughs> So and now she's just like booking guest roles on things and stuff. She's uh, that's awesome. She's on a roll. I'll tell you, she's on a roll. That she loves awesome. it. That, so let's let's backtrack. Yeah. And um, to when really you sense. were her age, uh -huh. um, were you already acting at that point? I was not a child actor. Okay. Um, I wanted to be. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my parents were very supportive. But they were like they didn't even want me to be on camera. Like mm -hmm. there was a documentary at school and opera company came in and I was one of the writers and I ended up in it and they like gave permission slips to all the um, parents. And then, you know, my parents were the holdouts. They were like, no, you know, very, very protective. I'm not going to say overprotective because I'm kind of the same. They, I mean, they, I, they wanted to make sure their, their child was going into a profession that you could actually you know, have an income, yeah. so to speak. Well, they weren't, that's, <laughs> probably, steady. They were, that's not the part no. they were protected about, which is interesting. Yeah, interesting. They didn't care. They believed in that. You yeah. Know, but they were like, when you're 18, it was more about like, you know, they were scared of uh, adults seeing children. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They were just, mm -hmm. they were very protected. I didn't sleep over at someone's house till uh, till I was 13. And but at that point, like nobody cared anymore. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, mom and dad yeah. <laughs> you know they were just those parents which i thank them for because i'm i'm okay today mm -hmm. you know and i kind of do the same thing with my kids yeah. but um but no i was dancing then oh i was dancing, i was dancing and i was singing um dancing was my first love and i was like but here's the funny part yeah so you know what technique is right? oh yeah yeah totally okay well I had 20 minutes of tap and 20 minutes of jazz a week mm. with a five minute shoe change. That was it. You know, my parents didn't realize, like I said, mom, dad, I want to be a dancer. You know, they didn't realize right. they had to like get me in ballet class and yeah. all that stuff. So when I turned like 11 or something, I had like a midlife crisis and I was like, mom, like what does a dancer do? And she's like, a dancer dances? I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea and I was like no, but really how do they work like where do they get work like so then I just started doing research my own independent research and I was like oh my gosh I'm like so far behind on this technique thing mm. and so they tried to put me in a ballet school at age 12 or 13 and I just sat in the back like completely utterly terrified because everybody had muscle tone in places they had they had their center. They knew how to do three pirouettes and land. And I was just kind of like, I was not awkward. I was a great mover. Yeah. Um, so I, they always put me in the front and the center and the jazz. They always put in the front and the center of the top. I was a girl that did the split in the middle, but I had no technique. And so, at this uh, at this time, you're still in New York City. Well, area. I was I was living in Albany. Albany. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay. So then. Um, you know, they supported me when I wanted to. I did the school musical, the plays. I did all, all the Shakespeare. I was a Shakespeare fanatic. I won the Shakespeare uh, recitation competition my senior year and got a trip to, to Stratford. Wow. So I was like, I do all the, you know, I got the slowly work my way up to the lead yeah. and the shows. And stuff. You know, I was a, a theater actor. I went to NYU and did all that, but I didn't, they wouldn't allow me to do professional work. Mm. They were like, you'll learn everything through school. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. So that's what I did, you know? Yeah. And then, so after NYU, you, you... After NYU, um, I started working right away in regional theater because mm -hmm. uh, people who are listening, they might not realize this, but there are theaters all over the country oh, yeah. and a lot of the really good ones that we'll talk about. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. That's a crazy coincidence. Um, they, most of them, a lot of them audition out of New York city. Um, they yep. just, they all fly in, they cast their whole season. 
because then they fly out. Right. You know, they do it usually. Exactly. Maybe they'll cast shows at a time. So mm -hmm. my first uh, equity show, or my first professional show right out of sh out of school was um, an equity contract, but I was like <clears throat> a non-union member. I don't know how they did that, but it was with Andrea McCardle. Okay. And Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream. Oh, wow. Nice. So um, we had like an amazing cast. I was like fresh out of school. I was like, what is going on? And um, they, I, they cast me as a chorus, but I was Jacob's favorite wife. Mm. And the director really liked my sense of humor. We just connected. And he was like, I want you to come down front and hold Jacob's, uh, hold um, Joseph's coat. And I want you to cry like Lucille Ball. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was like, you are speaking my language. You know? So I got a little feature in, you know, in the chorus. He kind of picked me out and said, you're going to do this special thing. And I was like, oh my God, that's yeah. amazing. And then I got um, Blues in the Night at the Cleveland Playhouse after that, which, which is traditionally an all black show, but like the original girl, so there's only four people in it, and the youngest one is called Girl, was played by Debbie Shapiro Gravett, I believe, who is white. Um, so they were auditioning uh, black girls and white girls for the role, and I just happened to get it, and that's where I, that's where I met my husband. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And so he was like the resident musical director there. Oh, very cool. It wasn't all the shows, but a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. That's awesome. Crazy. So yeah. for, for the first few years after NYU, you were kind of like going to New York City just to audition, but then you were like living out of a suitcase, basically. Oh, no, I was living in New York City. Oh, I moved, you did. I guess I went, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't commute. So I, um, I you know, did the dorms and all that at NYU. Mm. And then like my junior year, a couple of us were like, let's get an apartment. Like, let's, I think, it was, no, senior year. So, and then we moved on the Upper East Side because y'all... Back in the day, the Upper East Side was the cheapest place to be because there was no subway. Yes. <laughs> like, you had to walk all the way to Lexington, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So so they probably don't know this, but what, like a year or two ago? Maybe it was three years. Time is flying. The, what was the new train line? I can't even think what it is. The two or something? Yeah, some, the, yeah, the two or the N I, or, or I can't yeah, even there's remember. Some, yeah. I can't remember, but once that opened... Mm which they said was going to open for like 50 years. They were like, they were going to have this. And then it never happened. Then I think the prices like shot up, mm. but we were, I was living there when it was like, there was a ton of railroad apartments and you had to walk like, so I was uh, off of second Avenue. Oh, wow. With okay. A couple of friends. Yeah. And I start, I started there. Like, you know, I was living there when I was doing summer stock and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, where did I move after that? I eventually moved to the to Forest Hills, and then um, then I got two dogs, and then they were like, "Get out!" <laughs> <laughs> to Briarwood, yep. Because New York is crazy with dogs; they just don't want them. Yeah. And where you currently live now, um, are you close enough that you can just hop on a subway and just take it into the city? I can take a bus. Oh, yeah. Cool. I'm like, I'm like, it like eight. I'm like eight miles out. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's pretty easy, but I moved during COVID. So I haven't oh, done geez. that yet. during at this. Yeah. I was living in another house. I'm at a new house now. Yeah. And, um, so I haven't done this commute yet. It's a, just a little bit different. It's like two miles away from where I was. Right. So I will test that out. Yeah. When, <laughs> when things are safe to go back to nor yeah. quote unquote normal. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of summer stock, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I could not believe it. we had like a thirty second conversation and then I was like, okay, we gotta save this. <laughs> All right. Forestburg. Oh dear. <laughs> Where did you work as an EMC? No. Uh, uh, so I I um I auditioned for Summerstock uh for, for one of their for the, one of their seasons. I think it was Back in 89, 90, Amazing. something like that. Cool. And, um, I yeah, I mean, uh, th there were definitely a bunch of politics for sure when I was, oh, really? when, oh God, yeah. Was Norman, 
was it Norman? Was Norman the owner then? Is his name I, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, kind of blonde, right? Blonde guy. He's not there anymore. Okay. But um, I don't know if you remember this, because if you were like hired as an actor there, mm. maybe they didn't have the EMCs yet. I was hired as an equity membership candidate. Okay. We had this program before you were equity. Um, you could earn points, and you earned a point for every week that you worked. Right. And if you got one of these, you were like psyched because you were like, "This is amazing! I'm going to work with like some of the top New York actors in New York. I'm going to work with them, but I'm going to be like underneath them. I'm an understudy. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And have a little part. I remember I always had a little part in them. Um, she loves me. Uh huh. And <laughs> they had a wig and the like, the cool like what '30s outfits. I remember. And I remember having like solo lines and singing sections but i only had like one line in this scene and all i had to say is how much are these and i remember i'm i'm honestly guys i'm super professional like i am not the type to mess around on stage but like sometimes you work with people that like to do that and you're like super resistant but then after a while you're like all right i'll play along a little bit right so i had to say the line i think upstairs Anyway, towards the end, towards the end of the run, I started saying like, "How much are these?" I don't know. I was basically milking it, yes, like yes, not, not being super <laughs> trying to make you laugh. It was bad. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, uh, when I was there, we did uh, "Anything Goes," and I was in the chorus and. Um, I, I, I did that in high school, I played chastity. Uh, oh, it's sweet. Yeah. And, um, I, I, I did this, you know, just like, like as part of the chorus. And then they also had like this dinner theater special review thing that they did on Saturday nights or whatever the case. And so we were part of that as well. And it was just the, the, the best thing, the best thing out of that whole thing that happened was that the lead, um, from the show, uh, in Anything Goes, had a connection. She was like either dating this guy or I, 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 I became friends with the guy. And, okay. you know, we would, we would hang out and we would talk and stuff. And I met one of my idols um, because he, he had a direct connection with Victor Garber. And I, and I, I, I remember to this day, like, you know, uh, just freaking out because I actually he gave me his number and so I met him like on 42nd Street and like you know uh, I think it was like near 42nd Street and Broadway something like that and That's it was just like wow this is like whoa surreal but anyway I almost met Carol Burnett and Hal Prince on the same day. Oh! and like I she I I love Carol yeah Burnett, like love but um I had a like third callback for a Broadway show to play Carol Burnett. Oh, wow. It was called, um, Michelle Pock ended up playing her mother, which was weird because I'd understudied Michelle once before, and then she was also in one of my husband's shows because my husband writes musicals. So it was weird that all of a sudden I was almost going to be in another show with her. <laughs> um, but I, I, um, I remember what happened. So it was a third callback. And, and they said, you're going to meet Carol Burnett and Hal Prince. They're going to be at the, they're going to be like, you're going to be auditioning wow. for them. And I was like, that's ah. amazing. And then it was either Carol or Hal who missed the flight. Mm. So then they said, you're, you'll meet them at the next, you know, round of callbacks. And then I, that was the end of my journey. Aww. I didn't, I didn't get the final. And I was like, are you kidding me? Aww. But you know, you meet some amazing people yeah. and then, but that was like a near miss that I was like, mm -hmm. about. lost. Lost in Arms? Was it called? Or Hollywood Arms, maybe? Hollywood oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so you do a bunch of stage stuff, right, for a, mm -hmm. a number of years. How does this transition happen into anime? Uh, well, anime, yeah, that's how I started. Well, I started with um, Ultraman Tiga. That was the first show I got. Uh -huh. um, and this is the terrible part. <laughs> And maybe the fans can tell me later. I can never remember if my main character's name is Rena or Reina. Let me explain why. We did like eight episodes and she was like Rena or something like that. Okay. Then we got eight episodes in and they were like, 
oh, you know what? Her name's Raina. Uh, so then everybody had to like redo, redo yeah. eight episodes, all lines. Mm -hmm. So to this day, I always say like, Rena, Raina. Like I can't remember <laughs> which one it was. But um, I started auditioning for for voiceover in 2002, but it was like a life goal of mine. I, I had a list when I was like eight years old. I wrote down what I wanted to do when I grew up and I said, I want to be on Broadway. I want to be the voice of a cartoon. I want to be on Saturday and Saturday Night Live. That was the third wow, one. Wow, so, cool. All right. Yes. It ended up that Broadway happened first and then voice of a cartoon and then Eventually, I was like, okay, now I'm going to take stand up comedy yeah. class. Yeah. As a child. Because, like, I had my daughter, and I was like, so I went to class, like, with Holly Mandel. Do you know Holly Mandel? No. She's uh, the ground, she, she was a groundlings person, and she was the sec, like, second season sub, I think, on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Okay. She was really great, but she she was definitely more, um, at least in my opinion, was more interested in content mm. and news and current events. And um, and I'm interested in that, but that's not where my sense of humor lies at all. My sense of humor is character-based. Right. You know, I want to play the the woman that comes in and she's had too much plastic surgery. You know, plastic <laughs> surgery. Hello, everyone. How are you? You know, she has a permanent smile. Right. <laughs> not interested in like the information I'm interested in behavior yes. physicalization and vocalization that's my that's my love in life like you yeah, it's like yeah. my love is love to transform yeah love to, that's my favorite thing that's awesome so I don't mind being me that's okay too but if I if I can be someone totally different than me mm -hmm. that is my favorite yes that's my favorite. yes so is that is that you too? Oh, totally, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. So we have the very lovely Erica Schroeder on with us today. Uh, for those of you guys that are going, who is that? Um, well, let me tell you a little bit about some of the stuff that she's done. You know, just some small stuff. You know, nothing big. Just small stuff like, you know, Pokemon. You know, where uh, in addition to Evie and Nurse Joy, she also played Woba Fett. I, I don't know. Is that how you pronounce it? Is it Woba Fett? It's... it's it's Wabafet. 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 Okay, Wabafet. A fan made this for me. Oh, very like cool. A... And, um, exactly. of course, you know, a, a whole <laughs> slew of others throughout the entire, you know, Pokemon franchise. Um, uh, <laughs> I like the title of this show. I've never seen it myself. But Boy, Girl, Cat, Mouse, Cheese... Uh, where you play <laughs> cheese. I never to learn how to say it. Huh? It took me forever to learn how to say it. <laughs> and that, uh, I mean, as I was just kind of going through some of your credits, uh -huh. is that an original animation? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, Yay. I'm totally in love with the show. Let's see. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like in love with it. Yeah. Um, we'll see if it gets picked up in America. I really feel like it will. Mm. Um, because it already got picked up in Canada. Sweet. It started out in Europe. Um, and it's just got an, a killer cast. The scripts are so funny. Yeah. Like, it's it just like such a joy to get a script that you're very excited about when you read it and you're like laughing out loud. I'm like laughing out loud as I read right. it. I'm like, oh, I can't do this. And the fact that you actually get your scripts before you go in and record. I know. Isn't it? What? It's luxury. It's luxury. <laughs> it happens every once in a while, you know, when I'm doing a relay. I was, like, I'm sure they know they've heard it yes. before. Yes. Relay, ADR. Yeah. ADR, same thing as dubbing. Right. But yeah, it's totally different. Um, totally different. <laughs> but, but both equally thrilling in different ways. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And then um, Sonic. Hello, Blaze the Cat. Right. Um, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, May Valentine, Dark Look, Magician Girl. These are all my kids. These are all my kids. Oh, yay! <laughs> but awesome. I was like, let me put them near me so right. they, like, would say it. Like, <laughs> there you go. Um, One Piece, you them. were Monkey D. Luffy. Yes. Yes. And um, Wings Club, one of my daughter's favorite shows. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Daphne that. and uh, Headmistress uh, Farragonda and Piff, as well as many others. And then uh, anime game lover. Uh, oh, 
the, those are questions. Those are questions. Got it. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, a whole slew of stuff. So obviously, because when okay, let me uh, let me kind of preface the the question before the question. So in NYU, when you attended, were they still? Because I know at one time they kind of started doing a little bit of a transition, but at one point in time they were more classical training. And then they kind of started dovetailing into like, well, you can do, you know, more modern drama stuff or you can do more on camera stuff. Like wh when were you there? Was that during the transition? Was it before? It was after the after. transition. After. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know exactly how, like what it was like before I was there, mm. but we had many studios. You could go to Stella Adler oh, wow. for this. Cool. You yeah, could yeah. go to Stroudsburg. You could go to the Mammoth Studio, which I don't know what they called it then, but I think it's called Atlantic Studio now. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go to Circle in the Square, and that meant you get everything. You could go to Cap 21. Wow. Um, and I think there was one other primary studio. Yeah. So what you had was you had, um, what's the one I'm forgetting? And it's the one I like the most. <laughs> Gosh. It's the one I like the most. It's the this one. <laughs> anyway, there's the this one. And, uh, you, could, you had to do two years of a primary studio. So, and you didn't get to choose. Mm. You got, there was only one musical theater studio. So like everybody was trying to get in, not everybody, but. The people who, wanted, who were in musical theater wanted to be in that one. And there's only one musical theater, like everybody wants to get in that right. one. So um, I was very lucky to get in early admission to that program. Oh, wow. And so then I was like, whew. you know, I had seven other schools I was planning on applying to and I was like getting ready. I think I applied to them. I think I applied to all of them. Yeah. I think I just didn't. I think I was waiting for Juilliard because Juilliard has a music program mm -hmm. and a drama program. Mm -hmm. They don't have a They're both. Yes. Theater program. Yes. And I was like, you know, that's, I want to go there. That's like, was my dream my whole life. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I really need the dancing. Yeah. You know, I we had a conversation earlier. Sure. I, I really, really needed the dancing. And I was like, we can't do one or the other. You know what I mean? Did you only so, apply to schools that were in New York? No, I applied to Carnegie Mellon. You did. I I applied to Ithaca. Yeah. I applied to then um my parents okay. The plan was <laughs> for me to go to a SUNY school, you know? Okay. Um yep. so a state of New York school mm -hmm. because uh my dad had to put three of us through college. You know, a lot. Are you the he youngest or where are you? I'm the youngest. You are, okay. I'm the youngest, yeah. So it was always the plan that I would go to SUNY Purchase. That was always the plan. Mm -hmm. Like, that's got a really strong drama program. Mm -hmm. It didn't have musical theater, but I was also a Shakespeare nerd. So I was like, this is the perfect place for me. And I could take singing lessons on the side or, you know, maybe get some dance lessons in, you know, in there somewhere. Right. I, I don't know how I reported that. But that was always the plan. We visited the campus. My father freaked out. And my father is stoic, okay? He's Schroeder, okay? Yeah. German. But, like, <laughs> from way back. But, like, he, he inherited that. You know, if I wanted my dad's reaction on something, I had to, like, you know, say, like, the house is burning down! <laughs> then I could get straight. Right. <laughs> so we're, we're on the campus, and he's looking at the campus newspaper, and he's just seeing a bunch of kids around, like, with their shoes off, smoking weed and he's like you know he's totally freaked out he's like this is so anyways just what he sees in the newspaper is like um crack addicts um at lesbian party and then he's like um heroin and and heroin and lesbians like everything he saw was right like right i don't he didn't care about the lesbian party. yeah but the drug yeah he was like he was terrified because he always said to me never give your mind away Never give your mind away. So as much as he believed in me and my integrity, he said, this is in the middle of nowhere. These kids have nothing to do and you're not going there. And I was like, Why? <laughs> like, that's a statement when that was the only school that he could afford to send me to. Ooh. So, um, I had to get a scholarship. Yeah. So I got it. I got, thank goodness. I got a talent scholarship at NYU. Mm. And then, um, then I was in, you know, then I had, student loans for the rest of it right right a scholarship yeah. to college yes exactly <laughs> i paid it off though. i paid it off yes so yes, it took yes, a while yes. but I, I paid it off so <laughs> it was you know worth the investment i do feel like it was the right school for me mm. you know? yeah 
because I was afraid of the city. You know, uh, it's fast, it's loud. People are pretty rude. Mm -hmm. You know, I love New Yorkers, but they're tough. You know. Yeah, they are. So, yeah, they are. I, when I graduated, um, I was in New York for about two and a half years, and I was all over. I was like a New York mutt. So I was in Astoria, and I was in Brooklyn, and I was in Upper West Side, Upper East Side. Wow. So yeah, oh I, my was, gosh. I was all over the place. Everywhere. Yeah. But you remember what it's like there. It's like, it's awesome, but if you come from the suburbs and you're used to seeing someone, if you and I make eye contact on the street, mm. we smile. Yeah. We nod. Yeah. Or we say hello. <laughs> what if we think? Right. You smile, you nod, you say hello. It's just, if you don't, you are saying yeah. Right, exactly. Like you're literally, if, right. you, if I look at you on the street, you look at me and I go like this, I'm saying, yeah. right. that's that's what that means. Right. Um, that's just what it means. So <laughs> but you go to New York and you smile, you say hello, you know, you get... <laughs> right. Unless someone's like interested in dating you yeah. and then you're like, no, I'm just being friendly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just friendly. I'm just a friendly person from the suburbs. Okay? Leave me alone. Yeah. But um, I just remember... It was so hard for me to give my spirit every minute of every day out into the universe and then to have it not reciprocated. It was painful. And I did it for 16 years, you know, and not my friends, not people I work with. I had so much joy in that. But in the everyday New Yorker interactions, it took me a long time to not take it personally. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. that when you give, you give so much and then you just get this nothing back. It sucks a part of you out. It does. Yeah. It does. But I, I'm an eternal optimist. Yeah. So I stayed for 16 years because I was like, wow. eventually, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> you know, and then I was like, you know what? I love working here. I love working here. I don't have to live here. Right. Yeah. And also I thought, I need my kids to grow up in the dirt. I want them to climb trees and grow up in the dirt. Yeah. And unless you live right next to Central Park or, you know, and it's a limited patch of dirt right. that lots of dogs pee on, yeah. I was like, I want them to be able to crawl and not be like, oh, let me remove the dog poop from their hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I love New York. I love New York. I was born and raised in upstate. I lived there for 16 years. I still work there. But I'm happier living outside and going in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even if I go in every day, I'm still happy. Better for your mental health, for sure. I do. I think it's, it's you have to be either uh, super wealthy mm. or live in an area that's super fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to be okay with not being able to control all the sounds around you <laughs> at three in the morning. And the person that has a large dog above you or a little dog that jumps off the bed, you know, 20 times a night. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff you got to deal with in New York. and. You know, you build up a tolerance to it, and you're like, you're, you're okay. Everything kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's not as joyful as it could be. Yes, if you were wealthy sure. or living in a you know a fantastic apartment in a fantastic community. So, and that's just very few people <laughs> exactly. live that way. There, you know. So, uh, in your illustrious career that you've had so far. Um, are you at the point now, because I, I know that you've made a bunch of connections, you know, throughout your number of years, and I, you, you're probably, you're probably, uh, well, you know Michael, right? Which Michael? Uh, Center Nicholas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I love Michael. Yeah, Mike's great. Yeah. Um, but are, are you at the point in your career, would you say, that um, there have been some occasions where... Um, some projects have come up either with NYAC or some other group where it's like, hey, Erica, you know, we're doing the show and wondering if you might want to, you know, it's always funny how when, when people when call with an offer, do you mean? Right. They, they just say, hey, you know, yeah. we got this thing we, we, we think you might be right for it. Would you be interested in doing that? It's like, when has a voice actor ever said no? Number one. Right. <laughs> But I'm sure you've probably been in that position at this point. Yeah, I have been in that position yeah. many times. There's some, you know, times where things are moving fast and they know they need someone who can play um, a bunch of little girls and also some pigeons mm -hmm. and, and um, <laughs> a woman for one scene or something like that. Right. Um, so I definitely 
will, well, I'll get called in to do ancillary parts. I'll get called in to do lead roles sometimes when, if the client says, we don't need client approval. Mm. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's mm-hmm. the thing. Yes. But I do often get, you know, brought in in a smaller group, absolutely. And then sometimes just cast, mm-hmm. that happens. Yeah. And then sometimes, um, uh, NYAV is great though. They're, they, they are auditioned. You do not, they, you don't get handed a part. Yeah. It is no matter how long you have to work for it. Them. So I've been working with them since I think 2003, maybe. I mean, like on and off, I've been doing things for them. There was a period of time where, you know, I couldn't work there for just a little bit of time because I was only doing shows that I was already in mm. because I was living further outside the city and I could only come in like twice a week. But then once I got closer again, we, you know, I was like, I can come in again. I can audition again and stuff like that. But, um, but what the one thing they will do, um, if it's, if it's okay to say this is that, um, if there is like Walla, you know, and they need a real quick, great person who could just come in and do a lot of little things. I have been offered that before. Okay. And I think that's, that's respectable because I think they'll, they'll want someone they know who can do it and that. That is, they aren't going to be like give them five roles or, or two parts or three parts that they can't vocally separate, mm-hmm. but also make it real. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. because they're really into naturalism, which is amazing, and it depends on what what they're working on, right. you know. But um, they need actors that can tone it down, you know, be real, connect emotionally, um, not make it about the um, you know, the outside in, which is like pitch, right. uh melody cadence um uh, scale of loud soft you know those kind of things uh they're not looking to direct that right right, you know and they don't which is awesome yeah um direct from here and from here Mm -hmm. and um, their stuff is just like fantastic because of it yeah yeah and um so but yes they they are like and they and they audition on both coasts so if you get a part you better jump up and down and, and, and pop a bottle of champagne. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So that's, I, and that's how I feel every time I work on one of their things. I'm like, uh, I do, I do have to ask only because I watched it recently and, um, uh, didn't realize until after the fact, when I knew that I was going to have you on here, um, that you were in the same movie that I was in, um, that what movie did we do? Yeah, there? we did Lou over the wall. Um, oh, right. You said that. Yeah. Do, do you even remember what you did? I've never seen yeah. it. <laughs> but it was one of those things where I saw it on IMDb. Like, I ignored that forever. I mean, I literally ignored it forever. Mm. I was just working. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, and then, then you discover, like, oh, I guess I should, like, tell people what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm. Um but I don't remember. I don't remember. Really. Yeah, it's all right. That's all right. I mean, I gotta watch it though. Now that I know we did it together, we. Uh, you know what? If it, if if you haven't seen it, if I can make the suggestion to you, watch it with your daughter. Okay. Oh my God. What year? What year did it come out? What it came out like maybe two years ago. But I think they. No, actually, oh. no. It came out last year. It came out last year, and it's on Netflix. Did I do ancillary work on it? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to get in so much trouble. For this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I misread it. But it's Maybe okay. You, I mean, we both do so many stuff. You know, it's like you can't remember every single thing that you do. Sorry. That's okay. Yes. <laughs> but um, if I, I don't know if this, if this is going to be one of the questions that's going to be asked, but it's one of the questions I love to ask fellow voice actors. Um, I'm, I'm sure with the number of roles that you've done, there's probably been at least one or two roles that you personally, Erica, resonate with that character. It's like, oh my gosh, this character is so much like me. Um, I, and, and you find yourself, because of that, doing, not that you don't always do your best as, a, as an actor, as an actress, but because of that link, that you know subconscious link that you have with this character, it's like, Anything that comes out of your mouth is just like, oh my God, this is just like me. It's like, hello. What What would you say if you could name a couple or, or one uh, character 
that you that you can remember voicing that that you kind of have that affinity with. Oh, this is a tough one. Um, Akiza was the most like me vocally, mm. and the most like me in the sense that my heart. What once I open my heart to you, it is just like open, mm. you know. Mm. Um, but no, none of the characters I have played have been like me, mm. like completely. There's elements like. Bianca, I shouldn't say this, but Bianca from Pokemon is a little bit like me, only because, not because she's a klutz, yeah. <laughs> but because she's like, when she's around people that she likes, she's very bubbly and happy, and um, I just remember, I loved playing that part for some reason, mm. um, so I don't know, maybe she's not a lot like me, she does, she's a stalker, so she's, <laughs> I'm not a stalker, like, she's kind of stalkerish, yeah. I would say, but she, I love the fact that, um, I was allowed to kind of sing a little bit with her. Oh, that's, there was no singing. That's cool. But her voice is like, ah, like right. she just did these crazy things and <laughs> he just like crashed into people and she just kind of came out of the scene and was like, I'm here and I'm actually not always like that. I'm I'm in a room of people. I'm just the quiet one until I get to know people and mm -hmm. I can actually be the quiet one. I don't always want to be the center of attention, but I think she reminded me of how I was maybe um, freshman year in college when every actor is so obnoxious and you're like in, yeah. you're in, you know what I yep. mean? And you're like <laughs> in the cafeteria and you're eating and you're like, you're eating with like 50 actors and you're like, oh my God, would you all just, n nobody bought a ticket to see you today. So like take it down a notch, right. you know, I learned that how to take it down a notch um, when I was like a junior or a senior in college. And that's when I went, I don't need to be on all the time. Right. That's annoying. Yeah. Like, I can just be a person who allows someone else in the room to be the center of attention. And I think that's a really important thing that every actor has to do. Mm -hmm. and, and when you play, I did a play at um, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Playhouse in the Park the year they won the Tony Award. They, they came and saw three productions, and one of the productions they saw I was in it was an original play called Hiding Behind Comets about Jim Jones. And um, it, it was crazy dark. And there were only four characters in it. And I was on stage for the whole first act. Um, but I very rarely spoke. Mm. I was the supporting role. Mm. The, there were three leads. And then I introduced three plot points mm -hmm. by way of just being there. I was just a chick at the bar drinking beer okay and I was um, the girlfriend of one of the main characters but I was completely unimportant to you know the story but I introduced super important plot lines to it so um, it was the first time I'd ever been on stage like a lot in like with a cast of four people and didn't have a leading part I was supporting and I remember getting a review that I was so proud of because it basically said she did exactly what she had to do. She supported everyone else on stage. Hmm. She didn't try and steal the, you know, she just, you know. Right. And that to me <clears throat> was the opposite of the reviews I'd gotten in the past. So I was like, I'm happy to be a fly on the wall. And just, I didn't even come in on the stage in the second act. <laughs> I learned how to knit and play the guitar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But I can't do either of them now. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool, though. That's really, really cool. Um, and then before I open it up for questions, have to ask. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you. And guys, you cannot be mad at me, okay? Because the, the times that we actually, as actors, get to actually see someone else's work, let alone our own, yeah. is, yeah. like, very slim. And um, the time that we have available to watch things, if we do... Uh, we better be watching stuff that we were in so we can talk about it later. So I will be honest with you. The only time I have ever seen Pokemon was when my daughter happened to be watching it. That's it. And I don't even remember half the the, the people that are in there, except for Team Rocket. You know, and... and I'm the same. <laughs> I watched it because my son was in love with it. <laughs> So I started watching because he did. Right. Not because right. I didn't love it, but because it wasn't 
written yeah, for me. Yeah. No. Exactly. It was but for the kids. But or if it's someone who's already <laughs> an anime fan, you know what I mean? And then they like stick with it, of course. But it wasn't my generation, exactly. so I was I was like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I yeah. do have to ask, only because the little that I do know about the show, I'm sure everybody will probably be very fascinated to know what the answer is. So, in Pokemon, obviously, one of the main characters you have, who happens to be probably one of... I, I could be wrong. I might be making a really big statement here that might be completely wrong, but I think Eevee is probably one of the most loved characters by females across the board. I might be wrong on that, but that's my impression based on the number of times that I see that character. When you... I'm assuming you auditioned for that. Yes. When you did, and I'm, you may not even remember the audition, unless it really stood out to you, because I don't remember half the auditions I was in. But were you allowed, Do you, if you remember this at all, were you allowed to come up with your own kind of creative, like, pitch, voice, nuances for that character? Or did they have something very specific in mind? They go, we want to make sure that you can do this, do it. Okay. This is a two-part answer. <laughs> okay. So, the reason why is because Casey Rogers was the original e English language Eevee, but I don't think she actually... Oh, forgive me, guys. They might know this better than me. Yeah. I don't know she did it that much because Eevee was like Pikachu mm. in that it was the Japanese actress that did it, and then occasionally... Um, they had uh, an, an American actress do it, who was Casey, who I love. Interesting. And who retired. Mm. And so mm, I don't actually know how many times Casey, Casey did it. So originally for the Eevee part, they wanted almost an exact voice match mm. to what had been done. Mm. But they were like, let's play around it a little, with it a little right. bit. But then when Sandy came along, you know, because it wasn't necessarily understood that I would also play Sandy. Like, I... I I had to, I believe, uh, I believe I also had to, it was assumed that I would play it, but I also had to audition for that. Like, I remember that very well yeah. because that was like a very, uh, a much more of an intense process than the other Pokemon I had played. Sometimes I would just, they would give me, you're going to play this Pokemon, you know, because right. the direct, various directors over the years knew what my capabilities were. And I am like, I'm an impersonator, you know, so and I impersonate a lot of animals. Mm -hmm. And so the, the best kind of Pokemon actors know how to create the human element of the animal and bring it to life or fuse two animals together and bring it to life. And then they know how to speak uh, subliminally. Okay. Or to, um, I was seeing some, someone today, I, had, I was being directed today and the director was like, um, say it like, you know, like you're saying this. And I was like, oh, that's my subtext, you know? Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was like, yeah. And I said, I, I love like layering like that. Yeah. You're saying this, but you're actually saying that. Well, that's what Pokemon, that's what voicing a Pokemon is like. So when we created the voice of Sandy, it was um, really collaborative, but also like I had to get approval. You know, a lot of people had to approve of that sound. They wanted a little scrappier, sure. a little more playful, um, less uh, uh, less streamlined, less um, smooth, a slight bit more texture. Um, it was so much fun creating that part and just to see, to do the storyline. Um, I do have to say that like that was one of my favorite. Like during that period. That was like one of the things I really looked forward to each week. Like, when am I going to get to play Sandy again? That's that cool. it was just so because the character is so joyful and so cute and so happy and like all the interactions on the beach and stuff. Right. And I had so much fun doing it. That's an amazing question. It's a great question, That's and awesome. I and I do remember it very much. I remember getting like for years I never got corrections. Like. I think ever, mm. ever on a Pokemon. Mm. I've never gotten a correction. So then all of a sudden, Sandy came along, and my first like, couple episodes, I got corrections. I was like, oh. like I wasn't insulted right? at all. Like, oh, everybody's paying attention. You know? <laughs> right. And it was mostly because the flap of EEV is open. Mm. It's very open. Mm -hmm. But I'm only allowed to say EEV, you know, EEV. So... 
my mouth shape is very different. <laughs> right? Yes. Because in the Japanese, it's ibai. So you you can open the flap more. So I had to figure out a way to make that work without saying ibai. So I think like the very first couple times I did it, I was like trying to slip a little eye in there, like, ibai! you know, <laughs> I didn't do that. Sorry. Not allowed to do that. It didn't happen. I was a twin sister. <laughs> not, but anyway, um, I did it a couple times. I was like, I'll slip this in here. I don't know if I was doing it intentionally or not, right. but like, I remember getting the notes and they were like, and, and uh, Lisa was like, you know, you said Eva a couple of times. <laughs> no. And so then I got a couple fixes. I think the first like two or three episodes and then they kind of, I might have gotten a, a couple peppered throughout, but they kind of like, we worked together to create exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and then everybody, then everybody was happy and it was kind of like smooth sailing. You know what I mean? That's but awesome. That's a awesome. Great question. Yeah. All right. You're such a Viewer, because you let people talk too. <laughs> well, let's let's let some other people ask you some questions. Um, starting with anime game lover, who says, "Hi, Erica, you were an amazing part of my childhood. No question. Aww. Just wanted to give you a compliment." <laughs> Aww, thank you. You're so sweet. Uh, D23 Mon, aka uh, Aaron, would like to find out if there are any favorite. Uh, based on all the Pokemon rules that you've done, it doesn't necessarily have to be what we've talked about. It could be just yeah. one that appeared in maybe a couple of episodes. But are there any oh. favorite Pokemon rules that you've done, and why? I have a couple. I mean, I love to play. Look, I have my Pokemon pile here. I don't have that many. <laughs> I love Pancham because Pancham is like super spunky. Pancham. <laughs> you know, it just had a, kind of a brat. You know, like always. Um, I don't know. I like Spunky characters. Yeah. I love Sylveon. Oh, yeah. Because who doesn't? But there's this one Pokemon. There's so many. I I love the Oricorios because they kind of, they all sing. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a Hawaiian Oricorio yeah. that does a yodel. And so I got to, I got to yodel. Oh, wow. And sing. So I was like, this is so much fun. But then, um, the weirdest Pokemon I ever played, I'll say, and I enjoyed being weird, okay? <laughs> was Levani. I don't know if she rem remembers Levani or not, but it was also had this kind of like crack, like my voice cracked during it, this kind of yodel. Mm -hmm. And it was also sort of like, um, kind of creepy in a way. It's had this like, I don't know. It, <laughs> it was very it was fun creating that one. And um, I'll just say, I, a little bit of trivia here, and it's like never been written anywhere before, but I'm very good at bird sounds, all kinds of bird sounds, really? except for whistles. Uh oh. So whenever there's like a squawky kind of bird or like a anything like that, they would you know call me in for the for the part like tranquil and like all these. Very other. cool. So they, I probably play like twelve bird Pokemon. Wow. But and they're and they're all very different. Wow. But um, but yeah, Levani Lee, Lee was kind of fun just because it was weird and fun. And now I, I have to kind of quote-unquote, dovetail the question. <laughs> oh, no, gosh, that was so good. <laughs> so, um, since you, you can do 12 different sounds, uh, did you, like, study the birds? I was a weird kid. I mean, I mimicked everything. Okay. I had, and I had a National Geographic record of birds. Really? I loved it. Wow. I, it was fascinating. Um... I, you know, always did the voice for um, monkeys and any anything I could imitate. Uh, and, like, the Little Mermaid and um, the Muppets. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I do, like, I impersonate all the male Muppets. <laughs> like, not the females, which is always so interesting. But um, I was just always interested in the, something that was just that much further away from me. Right. Like, all the Twiddlebugs, even though I know they were all sped up, mm -hmm. I... I do the voices for all the little people. Oh, uh, that's cute. And they're all really different. That's cute. But, uh, no, I, I, I guess I just always, I study sound. It's like, you, I'm sure you have, have a fascination with, um, you have a fascination with behavior. Yeah. And behavior is sound yeah. and also realization. Right. So, like, I'm a, too. I'm like, how is he carrying, like, mm. where? 
right. The way he walks, he's carrying all of his tension, like right in that one shoulder, you know? And like, I can see probably a second career for me could be like Rolf yeah. like, or something. <laughs> Someone could teach me and I'd be like, you're holding your tension right here in your fourth right. rib and you need like a Rolfing right here. But um, I'm just a little bit of a, a nerd only with, I would say, behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, I like to watch and listen to, to everything. That's, so oftentimes it's bad yeah. because I'm watching like an epic thing like Game of Thrones mm -hmm. and I'll be like, I'll, I'll be like 20 minutes into the scene or something and I'll be like, look at my husband and I'll be like, what's happening? I forget what's happening because I'm just watching the way they're interacting with each other and is there, is there tension, yeah. you know, like focus in on something that I shouldn't be focusing in on. Basically. So Kim has a question for you. Um, when you voice Evie, does the script have different marks for inflections or do you ad lib? Ooh, that's a great it is a combination between what is seen on the screen. So if you notice in the Japanese, they don't really follow it at all. It's kind of like whatever they want to do. And then the flap doesn't even have anything to do with it. It's just the style yeah. there. Here, it's way more uh, matching the flap. So, um, you know, but so it's, it's looser. It's, a, it's, it's not like if you're doing human, it's like super spot okay. on, right? If you're doing a Pokemon, it's there are certain points that they'll want it to be super spot on. And then there's some point, points where it can be a little bit of that. There is, there are no syllables written out. It literally just uh, explains what is happening or how you're feeling. Um, so then I give it like, we give it language, you know, um, I will be like, um, you know, I really want, really, really, really want some food. You know, I'm so hungry. And then, um, I will try and match the flap and say that mm -hmm. with that in my mind. That's my subtext. Yeah. I'm so great. Like if the Pokemon's name is, I do a great your own Pokemon exercise at conventions that is so much fun. There's an envelope and we've got syllables. I'm like, we want two syllables or three syllables. And then um, I show them how I create the voice of the Pokemon. Right. And create their own. So if it's like um, uh, the characters, I'm so, I'm saying I'm so hungry and the Pokemon is, um, uh, Give Fliffy, give Fliffy, right? I don't know. And it's a, um, a chicken Pokemon, give Fliffy. Yeah. Then give Fliffy, say, give Fliffy, give Fliffy, give Fliffy. You know, like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> or like, I love you, give Fliffy. Right. Says, give Fliffy. You know? um, that's the way we do it. So I give it, we give it language yeah. based on what I think it's saying. And it, um, but it's not flapped. It's, the syllable's not written, so it's, it's a lot of improvisation. I get to decide which which um, syllables I want to use. Okay. So the Wobbuffet thing, I can't do it for you, for example, because I'm not allowed to. Yeah. But if it's, you know, if I see one, two, three, you know, I'm usually going to go Wobbuffet, mm -hmm. right? But if it's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, I'll go, you know, Wobba, Wobba, Wobba. No, or I can do wah, 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 or I can do wah, 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 fa. You know, I can't do fa. Right. No, I can't do fa. <laughs> but basically, it's hard to do it out of character. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get good at it, and you just like you learn how many syllables are. You watch it, and then you you like you follow it, and then you know you might not get what you want on the first thing, and then the director might say like, okay, but way more aggressive. Mm -hmm. about it and then you, you take the tape again so i hope that answered your question I hope that's cool helpful. yeah yeah all right uh kite 1965 wants to know what was it like working in Yu-Gi-Oh? do you even remember the show oh gosh yeah i mean i worked on it forever and i love it i loved every second of it the engineer that i, I worked with a lot of different engineers they were like great they're part of the life of the show mm -hmm. because you get to see, you see them all the time. You, I Mike Knobloch, and he's just super chill and sweet. And then we have this guy. Um, his his name is Joe Shalik, but we call him Joe Vegas because he likes to gamble and he just goes by Vegas sometimes. So Vegas is hilarious because he's just constantly playing like a, a flub, maybe from a previous a previous thing. Yeah. Like he'll he'll have it on like a button oh. and like 
you'll <laughs> be ready to do something and, and it'll be like, okay, blah, blah, blah. like some weird noise that you make yeah. is like three weeks ago. But anyway, he, he, he's just so playful and fun, but he, he can do that because he's amazing. I mean, when you want to work with an amazing engineer, he never misses anything. If, I never have to redo it again because he missed sound. You know, and so it's really awesome to work with a director and an engineer. Not to say that the combination is, right. isn't can't be equally as wonderful, yeah. but it's really cool because it's really cool to work with like this because um, more often the engineer can save the read. And what I mean by saving the read is if I give it amazing performance and it's just a tiny bit too, you know, um, slow, um, they can, you know, speed it up a hair or they can, if I come in too early, it can, it can move to the left, it can move to the right. Directors can do that yeah. too. But they're more apt to like try and get that performance from you again, trying to recreate it, which is great too. Like I can recreate the same line 50 times if right. I want. And I can do it 50 times 50 different ways, just like sure. you, you know. Meisner, that's the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just sort of, it's, it's yeah. yeah. That, that's great. Um, oh, let us see. Anime Game Lover also wants to know what it was like working with the legendary Jason Griffin. Oh, Jason's a sweetheart. He's such a nice guy. I never got to work. Well, that's a total lie. What am I saying? This is the crazy part. Never got to work in the studio with Jason, but I got a part in something. It's a, it was a pilot um, shooting in Alabama uh, of, a, of a pilot of a series called Zomcom, mm. Zombie Command. And I played Jessica, the um, leader of this um, ragtag crew of zombie scientists. We weren't zombie hunters. We were tagging zombies for research. Right. And um, anyways, it's so funny. It's so well done. I got cast first. Um, I was one of the first people cast in it. And then they were really having a problem finding this other person for this role. And um, oh, I'm just forgetting the name of the character in the immediate moment. But um, I thought, you know, Jason also does on camera acting and he's really, really good. And I don't do a lot of on camera acting like that. I just, not because I don't think I can, but because I'm, I'm very busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. And also it's, it's, uh, I don't love it. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't love it as much. It's a different yeah. medium. I'm going to try it. I'm going to do some more when I get older and yeah. stuff. But, um, anyway, <laughs> so I got this amazing part in this thing and then they were like, you know, we're having a problem casting this role. And I was like, you should try my friend, Jason Griffith. Griffith. I think he will be, um, kind of perfect, you know? And so because I said that they reached out to him, he did an audition, like, um, not live, but like, I think live, but this was a while ago. Um, and he booked the part. So he and I went to Alabama together, oh, that's awesome. you know, I mean, not together, he went separately, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like he ended up working on the same, the same show? um, piece yeah. together for it was 11 wow. days in an abandoned hospital Aww. in Alabama. Emma in, in the middle of winter and it was very cold. It was very uncomfortable. So we were both like, <laughs> like all yeah. day. They had like, it was crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's cool though. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Hey, MMPR slash L'Oreal would like to know what type of characters do you like to play? Um, and uh, the second part of that, which is more of a comment than a question, it, 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 she wanted to say that you rocked as Aww. my Valentine, by the way. Aww. Thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you very much. Um, I like to play all characters. I kind of touched on this earlier. Um, I can't remember if it was before camera was rolling or, or after, but um, I love to play all kinds of characters, but I do love the like the ones that are really far away from who I am, <laughs> and I really love to play like old ladies, like old crotchety ladies, or old bossy ladies, or old mean ladies. That's really fun. Um, I like to play boys. I, I mean, who doesn't? Yeah. And um, I love to play creatures. Like, actually, have done played a zombie in three different projects before, mm -hmm. and one time. 
it was for ADR for that project. Like they, they didn't train the the chorus of zombies to sound enough mm-hmm. like zombies mm-hmm. all the time. So there were some lead actors that couldn't quite get the sound, so they had to do ADR. And I was like, I'll help with it. You know, like I can get together a crew of amazing actors in New York and like Lisa Ortiz engineer. Oh wow, that. that's awesome! And there was like. Uh, J. David Brimmer, um, I think I think Wayne Grayson, Wayne Grayson, myself, Eileen Stevens, oh, and Mike Pollock. Wow! And it, maybe more, but we were all in the booth together. You guys, oh. it was hysterically funny because we were really trying to focus and be so professional. But Eileen was the only other female, and I was doing my with these crazy sounds. We kind of all sounded like we were the same gender. It was weird. <laughs> and then I came up with this super hilarious, like creepy female sound that was kind of different than everyone else's. And she was like, ah! like, I don't know what she was doing, but she was right over my shoulder. And I kept laughing and they were like, Erica, you know, be professional, whatever. I'm like, I know this is my project. I'm sorry, but Eileen is making me laugh, you know? And then also Mike Pollock's sounds were hysterical. Oh. You know, because it's yeah. like gutter yeah, all yeah. But um, doing stuff like that, uh, yeah, you know, like <laughs> I like just do, do weird things. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, next star would like to know what. Ooh, very cool question. Um, huh? What, if if any, have stood out to you in the years that you've done stage? Uh, what your favorite role on stage was that you played? Oh my gosh. Um, so many amazing parts I have gotten to play. Um, you won't know this part. Her name was Mary in this play called Apple Cove. It was a, an original play at the Lark Play Development Center. And then we did it. Oh, where did we do it? Todd Mountain Theater. Um, and she was just this sort of, um, oh, I'll tell I'll tell what I know a little bit. Okay. Uh, there was this character named Meredith at, uh, at San Jose Repertory Theater. Oh wow! Cool. Um, it was a world premiere of this play. It was called Sons of Don Juan, but I played opposite Robert Cuccioli, as in Jacqueline Hyde, the original. Under- nice. So he had three women in his life, but I was one of the women, and I was a recent divorcee from New Jersey with braces <laughs> and I was really kind of very awkward. It was just really funny, kind of like ditzy, but awkward character, but she sung in Spanish. That was the twist. Okay. They would sing. Um, he was like a hairdresser named um, Willie and I was totally in love with him, like a fangirl out in love with him. <laughs> and so I would just like almost faint when I, on stage with him it was just a sort of like that character took over my yeah, body yeah you know yeah what i mean and i was like <laughs> i mean not to sound psychotic i was still there erica right. was in control yeah. but like i became this role and i loved it so much she was so sweet <laughs> and so awkward and i added so much to her that wasn't on the page and the director and i creating this character together I just fell in love with it, and I, I was like, oh, I wish we could do this again somewhere, but it was amazing working there. You That's know? cool. I drove through the Diablo Mountain Range yes. um, to get to Los Angeles one day with my husband, and I had a day off because he came to visit That's me. awesome. That is yeah. so awesome. Ah, uh, hey, speaking of uh, Pokemon, uh, Pikachu Master would like to know what it was like working on one piece oh it was it was great um i'll try and explain like the beginning Mm. of it and the the first week of it you know a lot of the people were there like everybody was there from out of town we had it was the first role i'd ever played where all the work wasn't done in the recording studio okay so we actually had meetings you know they had this one room at four kids that was just made it was a huge table with those rolly chairs in yeah it, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and i don't know what that room was for i mean i know turtles used it a lot 
So, because I did two guest roles on Turtles, and I remember we did the read-throughs in right. there. It was the read-through yeah. table. So, we had meetings in there about the show, you know, with um, with the cre- with some of the, I don't remember exactly who was there, but team members from Japan were mm-hmm. there. And we, there was a translator there, and they, we were kind of talking through everything and what they wanted from the role that he was fierce, but insanely joyful and goofy and all these things. And um, so we created the part together and they were there for about two weeks, but we had like a couple of meetings about it. And then they got me in food and then we started working together. So it was like a much more intense process than um, previous shows that I worked on there. But I was so excited to do it. Um, I had a wonderful experience. I'm not going to lie, you know, but I do realize that it wasn't an exact adaptation. It wasn't, but what's really cool about it now is that first of all, I'm looking for a couple of volumes. If anybody can help me, I have the first six episodes from years ago. I just got them out. My son watched them and flipped out, you know, because it's for his yeah. age. It's, it's perfect transition material into the current mm. one. Like if you're gonna, if you have a younger child, you can be like, this is going to be totally different, you know, and similar in some ways, but there's going to be a lot of changes. Right. Um, you could watch this one first and then graduate to the other one. So um, I had an amazing time. And we did have a session all about the laugh. How is Luffy going to laugh? You know, and it is an homage. The, the laugh that I came up with is a uh, an homage to Woody Woodpecker. Mm. That was inspiration and by homage i don't know if you guys know what that is but it's like a dedication it's a it's a it's like a hat tip so um that was created together that was a collaborative process yeah and it was that's awesome that and rare yeah in oj that you know when you're dubbing that into english you get that a kind of an opportunity yeah absolutely um although i couldn't sing for three years huh I couldn't sing in a musical for three years because the director had Mondays off. And you know, as a theater actor, you're dark on yeah. Mondays. So I wanted to record on Mondays. Mm. I never, ever, ever got to uh, So I could do three hours of The Voice yeah. and then sing in a Broadway show at night. I just right, couldn't do right, it. Right, right, right. So that, that part sucked. Mm. Mm. That's, that was the biggest sacrifice to me. Um, wow, a whole bunch of questions here. We're probably not going to be able to get through all of them. I'm sorry, I will try and No, 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 Uh, but I I do want to be, you know, I don't want to take up all of your time. I want to be respectful. Um, So, um, let's see here. Uh, Mel V, we'll we'll go with that one next. Um, First of all, lovely to meet you. When you were called in to audition for Dark Magician Girl, did you think she was going to look like a female twin to Dark Magician, or did you already know that she was going to be a girly girl? <laughs> That's cute. Did I already know she was going to be a girly girl? I, oh, I remember playing her. I don't remember the audition. I, I don't know why. I just don't remember yeah. it. Um, but you know, she, she doesn't talk that much. So like, so infrequently did you hear Mm -hmm. her? Um, so I remember that very well because it was special, you know, and I remember doing it in the movies and, and, um, I remember loving it. And I remember thinking this, this role is very precious. I knew that. This is, I better get this right because she's super sweet and super, but she's cutesy. She's got that, um, so I remember the process of doing it and really enjoying it, but I don't remember the audition. So that's that's okay. That's all right. Um, Steve Wade, how are you doing, Steve? Hope you're good. Um, would like to know how the audition, if you can remember, um, how the auditioning process was for voicing Wilba Fett, uh, which Kaisi, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, do, do you remember oh, that process? Like... I remember that because um, Casey's voice, uh, that was also a role that I took over for Casey right. for, is so similar to mine in certain ways. And that's why I got a lot of her mm. roles when she retired. 
it was really awesome because I got her blessing. She was like, I'm oh, so glad. That's cool. It was so sweet. And I just honor her all the time because I love her and I think she's yeah. Good. But um, she has a part of her voice that is so unique and like so meaty, I'll call it. It's meaty in the middle. Wabba fat. And I remember trying to create that meaty sound and have less of the, um, what I will call the, don't get me wrong, Swabba Fett's not smoky, but there's uh, there's different types of textures. Mm. You know, there's like um, Cookie Monster, <laughs> which is like meaty, yeah, okay? Right. So I had to get this like more meaty sound in Wabba Fett, and I remember listening to a compilation on YouTube over and over and over and over and over again, because I am a mimic, mm. I am an impersonator. Mm. Because of mm. that, and then I remember they said, "Okay, now that you impersonated, now change right. it." But um, I remember bringing—I never bring the phone. I very rarely bring the phone in the booth with me. If I'm taking a boothie, it's because I went on a break, got my phone, and brought it right. in. Because I'm—I'm I'm an old pro, yeah. you know. Don't do that. You just—it's a no-no. Plus, you don't want to put it near the cord because then there's all kinds of interference and it's a distraction. So, um, but I brought the phone in with me and I remember saying like, I need to listen to this like right before. And they were like, no problem. So, um, I remember like just trying to recreate it as much as possible. And then the first like three months I played the part, I listened to her. I'd come early, sit in the waiting room and just listen mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I had her performance in mm -hmm. my head. And then eventually it shifted yeah, away a little right. bit. And it became more yeah. mine. But um, because with their permission, sure. like it doesn't have to be exactly, you know, yes, but, you know, the essence of the character is more important than the, you know, per perfect vocal match. So I started to move away from it a little bit because um, her way of voicing it was a little bit more strenuous on my, on my vocal cords than my way of voicing yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. So, All right. Do you have a favorite musical? Oh, I have a few favorite musicals. Um, West Side Story. Yay! Right? I mean, the score is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. And the song Maria. And actually, um, I got to do it. It was my first professional show. This is a crazy story. I, oh my gosh. <laughs> Can I tell a slightly inappropriate story on here? Um, Not, no cursing. Yeah, sure. Okay. No cursing, but one word that is, okay. So when I got that part, oh, I, I auditioned, I was 17 at, for um, Park Playhouse, which was the theater in Albany where all the professional actors came from New yeah, York. Yeah. And I was like, I'm in high school, but I'm going to audition to be Maria in West Side Story in a professional theater. I'd never done anything like that in my life. And I got a callback and then another callback. And, and I was like, oh my gosh, I could get this. Like, this could be mine. And this is back in the day when if you were a white girl, you could play Maria. That's not the case right. anymore because we're much more sensitive about it and we sh as we yeah. should be. But anyway, um, that's only recent change, which is a good change. But um, I almost got it. And then I, I was crushed. I didn't get it. But it was funny because they actually called my school. I remember this. Or I was allowed to call them from school. They came and got me from the office and were like, you had a phone call or your my mother called and said I had to call them. It was bizarre. Yeah. So I remember going to my school office and being like, <laughs> Your kids, this, I'm going to find out like my future is like, am I, did I get Aww. Maria? And, and they're like, you know, I don't remember who gave me the call, but they were like, we're really sorry. Like we can't offer you the part of Maria. And I was like, so sad. You know, she's like, but you know, we can offer you the part of the, of the tit singer, which is what I heard over the phone. Okay. And I was like, I just went to tit singer. <laughs> like I, I just, I repeated that tit singer and then I was so confused. And then she's like, hit singer. Hit singer. And I was like, Oh my God. I was like, I thought you said tit singer. And it was, she was in hysterics laughing. Cause I was like, I don't remember the part of the tit singer. In the West Side Story. I just don't remember that. I was like, who, who is that part? <laughs> so that the, um, the pit <laughs> doesn't ever go on the stage. The pit singer sings is the is also known as the somewhere in ballet vocalist. Yeah. So I got to sing the most beautiful song 
in the world from the pit with a light on me uh, in front of this huge audience being 17 years old. And I remember every night I was like, there's a... You know, I remember being like, oh my God, this is my moment. Yes. And then the director was cool because he was like, how can I not use this girl for something else? So he added me and there was this, they added another girl in I Feel Pretty. Oh. So he made up a name for me. I can't remember what my name was, like Francesca or something. Um, he added me to the scene and I got to do that one scene and then I got this scene. Wow, that's cool though. That was the longest ass answer to that question, <laughs> but that's not my role. Sorry. That's that. okay. That's okay. Do you know the show Wicked? Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is coming from Aaron. If you were in Wicked, <laughs> would you want to play Alfamba or Glinda? Oh. Did you sound like you said Obama? No. Or... <laughs> Alfamba. <laughs> oh, 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 because it's Alphaba. Alphaba. It's a weird word. Okay. Alphaba so, or Glinda? Um, I have an interesting story about that. I went in um, when I was um, in Shout, I was doing Green Girl, and uh, casting directors come to the shows and stuff, and they were like really interested <gasps> in me. Wait, wait, Alphaba. wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out, time out. You said you were in Dream Girl? No, I was in Shout. The sh I was a Shout girl. It's called Shout the Modern yeah. School. It's a, it was uh, in the original cast, and I played this girl named Green Oh, girl. okay, okay. <laughs> and she was the she was the slut. I mean, that's, I'm sorry, but that's, yeah. they actually interested me right, that way. Right. Anyway, okay. they're all archetypes. Yes. And so the casting people had come to see the show, someone in casting with her. So they called me in, which is really funny, okay, because I played Green yeah. Girl. They called me in to play Alphaba, who's also pretty cool. <laughs> um, and I was also playing Lyserg. You know, I had just played Lyserg, whatever. I just had this green thing. And Bridget Verdant from um, Mew Mew. So I just had this thing with a color green. Uh, people in, saw me as green, you know. So I went in and I sang for Alphaba. But I had just done, we had just sung on Good Morning America. We had just sung on the WB News. We had done the cast album. And we had done, like, five you know 10 out of 12s or however many do wow. i think like but like we had just gotten off of like i was vocally exhausted mm. i could barely stand up because we just opened and then they're like why don't you come in and sing for alphabet like the most difficult role in the world ever written and i am like i'm a i'm a uh, blues jazz belter i'm a i'm a i'm a like a i go up to like a b you know super solid yeah. Um, when I get up there, I can mix or, you know, I did get six callbacks from Marine and Rent. And so I can belt yeah. up there, but not a chosen. Right. You know, I just, that's not my, that's not my thing. But I can mix the hell out of it and make you think it's a belt. But anyway, for that role, they want you to mm -hmm. belt. And then it does more, like a little more legit. So I finished singing. It was, it was a decent audition. I was tired. And they said, Erica, we are so sorry. And I was like, why? And they're like, you're a Glinda. You're a Glinda. You're not an Alphaba. And I was like, I, I know. I look like an Alphaba, but I'm a Glinda. <laughs> but um, Glindas have to be shorter. Aww. So, I mean, but they were like, you know, maybe, you know, so which one would I be? I'd, I'd have to say Glinda. Yeah. I think, yeah. 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 I was, uh, Kristen Chenoweth and I had the same agent um a long time ago i switched agencies and she stayed um but yeah i remember when her career was like blossoming and i was like oh my gosh like, i'm we had the same agent you know and uh see her at christmas parties mm. and stuff so, very yeah. cool Belinda. yeah cool 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 great question um oh uh shana rose would like to know um how you got the role of I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. Akiza? Akiza? Akiza. Did you yeah. have to audition for it? Yes. This is funny, okay? Because I know some people will watch ahead, you know, or watch Japanese or know what's going on and all that. Um, I don't think I was in 5Ds at all at that point. Um, but I think they had done the initial auditions first. Mm -hmm. I, I believe I remember. And then this new character came. Um, and 
I remember auditioning and then and starting, I don't know if you guys remember this, if you listen to the first couple of episodes, my voice was a little higher. And I was really trying to vocally separate from previous roles and I was like, you know, let me let me try this up here and let me pitch it. And the audition was up there and that's how they cast me. Then we get into session and Darren Dunstan, the director, was like, come down a little bit. Like, me, mm, I want it from here, like from you. Like, you, you, you're a Kiza, your voice. Like, let's hear that a little bit more, you know? And so as the episodes went on, I, I went, I went like, you know, just a little bit. And then I settled. Yeah. Um, here's the crazy part. I thought it was like this beautiful three episode arc guest role. I had no <laughs> idea. Until they called me for the fourth, fifth episode. And I'm like, boy, this is a long story arc. Like, when does she go away? And they were like, no, she stays. I was like, oh, really? Like, I was so excited. I was like, I didn't know. You never said like, hey, this is a huge role you're getting. Yeah. I didn't know, so it was a beautiful surprise. That's very cool. Um, yeah. Okay. I am going to... Let's see. How much more do we have here? Oh, good God. Wow. Um, got a ton. You know what? I am going to make a suggestion, my dear. Because we have so many more questions, and I feel so bad because it's already been like an hour and a half. Would you mind coming back? Of course I would come back. And, and here's, here, so much here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh -huh. So I don't know how we'll do this. We'll have to figure out how to make this work. But... Here's what I would we'll like, in addition to the questions, the questions, in addition to the yeah. questions, here's what I would love to do with you. Because I have never had the opportunity to um, uh, be in this show, and it's been one of my dream roles. And based on you doing characters and me doing characters and your voice and my voice, I would love to do Suddenly Seymour with you. <laughs> As as Seymour and Audrey, um, oh my like God. like find some sort of karaoke, you know, like video thing that we can just like somehow one of us would play it, and I don't I don't even know how we'd work it out. But would you be willing to come back and do that and answer the rest of these questions? Of course, yes, that would be so much fun. Yay. I how could I not know that you sang? You're oh yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, do, I, do, I just, I, this is crazy. <laughs> I, well, see, I've, I'm s very similar to you because I grew up, you know, singing and tap dancing and ballet and jazz and all that stuff. Um, and I'm like a lyric baritone. So this is perfect range for me as far as that particular type of song goes. But I've always wanted to do that. And I figured since you do, you know, character stuff and you love doing character stuff and I love doing character stuff, that would be a perfect song. Do you sing rock? Do you sing, oh, yeah. Uh, or like, okay. Yeah, totally. We might, I might have another. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can do one of my, my husband's Ooh, songs. That would be fun. I would love to do that. Who knows? Who knows? We'll have yes. Fun. But I, 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 I apologize guys. I know that you still have tons and tons and tons of questions. What we will do is because Lauren has been typing all of your questions down, we're going to save them. We're going to put them in a Word document. We're going to maybe add to them for the next time. Yeah? And then um, we'll be ready to rock and roll, and we will figure out a date that's perfect, you know, for you to come back. And it'll probably be, like I said, towards late October, early November. Are you cool with that? Yes, of okay. course. And I will try to be more speedy oh, no, with no. my answers. I love... I, I'm I, a storyteller. You know what I, I, you know what I love is... When, when we're in this type of environment, right, and everything's really relaxed and chill, um, it, it, that's what I love because then you're more yourself, you know? You're not, like, on stage. It's like you just, you know, and, and I love conversations like this with, with fellow actors because it's like that's, that's when you really, that's when some of the stuff that you maybe have put in the back of your memory starts coming out. It's like, oh my God, I totally remember that and I love that and blah, 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 blah. And that's what I love. So anyway, 
I don't think I've ever been interviewed by an actor before. <laughs> and that's why this has been like so much more fun. Yes. And like so much more interesting yeah. because then I'm like finding out about you at the exactly. same time and like exactly. crazy similar exactly. in our training and everything. Like that, this has been a yeah. blast. Thank you. So, uh, stay on with me. I'm just going to wrap things up, but stay on with me for a couple minutes if that's cool with you. Okay, cool. So, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Once again, I'm really, really sorry that we didn't get the rest of your questions, but at least we know that she will be coming back uh, in a stream in October, November, whenever it's, you know, right for her to come back and do so. And you'll get some additional bonus features, like some karaoke. So, hello. Um, so, uh, with that said, please, 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 guys, be good humans. Okay. Reach for the ground. Or start, <laughs> have your feet on the ground, reach for the stars. You guys know the story. Um, but that's it. Er Erica, any last words that you would like to tell everybody that's watching? Just thank you for showing up. I'm sorry I didn't get to everything, but this has been a blast. And um, I love you all. All right, guys. Take care. 